So at some point in your Flutterflow journey, you are gonna to want to consume third-party APIs. You're gonna to wanna to bring data from those APIs into your application. Now I'm gonna show you in this particular video a very, very simple walkthrough on how you use data types. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a very, very simple fake API. That data is gonna come into your Flutterflow application. It's gonna get mapped to strongly typed data type objects with inside a Flutterflow. And then of course that data is then gonna be persisted as those types with inside your project itself. And that's gonna make it really Really easy for you to then use that data throughout the rest of your application. So without further ado, let's get through the walkthrough and let's get cracking. Here is a, uh, a straight out of the box sample project. There's nothing special going on here whatsoever. Now I'm going to need to consume an API response. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a fake API response with inside BuildShip because I just want to test this in my Flutterflow application. So I'm going to hit the plus up here. I'm going to create a brand new workflow. I'm going to do fake API like that, hit create. Now all I simply need to do here is add a trigger and I'm going to add a REST API call. And I'm just going to give this a name, a fake API like that. Hit the plus here and I'm going to just return. And what I'm going to return here is the JavaScript object, which is going to represent the sample data. If I just paste that in here, here is some sample data that has come from a community question here. So that is good. If I just test that, just test the workflow, you'll see now that I'm getting that result coming back. So of course I can now, um, or I'd like to consume that with inside my Flutterflow application. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to ship this because I obviously want to make this uh, publicly accessible to my Flutterflow application. I'm going to copy that endpoint URL like that. I'm just going to head back over to Flutterflow. I'm going to move over here to then the API calls option. I'm just going to add the API call. So I'm just going to create a straightforward API call. We know it's a get request and I'm just going to say fake API here like that. And I'm just going to paste that build chip URL in there. Now I'm going to do nothing more than that and then just add the call. And of course I can then just wait for that to be, uh, that's it, just to, to do its thing. I can test the API call and I should see the same result as I had with inside my build chip application. Now, the great thing about Flutterflow and something they introduced um, in recent times is the ability for me to be able to kind of copy all of this here and create a data type which represents one of these JSON objects. Now, that's really straightforward to do. If I just move up here to then the data types option here, I can say where it says create a data type from JSON, if I just select that, I can give this a name. So I'm just going to call this a product for this particular example. I'm just going to paste. Oh, I don't want to do that. Of course, I just want to paste my API, my JSON. So I'm just going to go here, just move up to the test here. Just grab that here. Just going to copy that into the clipboard. Just do like that. And then just paste that in there like that. So there it is. I can hit create. Now it's going to be quite intelligent about this. It's going to kind of look at the kind of the name and the value pairs there. And it's going to kind of determine exactly what the schema of my product is going to look like. So this is pretty well much a single representation of one of those entries within that particular array of sample data. So now I've got that, that's really good. So what I can now do is I can now go back into my API calls and then I can go to the advanced settings here and sorry, response and test, I'll get in the right place. I can then move here and I can say data type and I can pass as a data type. If I just select that, I can now choose that particular data type and I can say product. Now, if I'm not returning back a single row and I return it back a list, um, of course, from my JSON response, my, my favorite API response that is actually returning me back a list so I can say is less like that so I'm now going to get returned back a list of products so if I just save that like that that is all good I can just test that again for just good measure and I'll still see the same representation there but of course behind the scenes Flutterflow is doing something a little bit more clever than that because it's going to cause parse that as a data type now if I move now back to then the widget tree now, if I want to now invoke that API, I'm going to need to create a page state variable. So I just move over here to here and create a local page state variable here. Now I'm going to just going to call this one products like that. I'm going to say a type. If I just move here down to data type here, this now gives me opportunity to say that it's going to be a list that I've got coming back. And the type, of course, is going to be of product. Hit confirm. So that is now nicely set up for me. Now I can move to my button here. I just want to press that button. Of course, I just want to invoke that API call. So just move over to the actions, open up the action flow editor, just set on tap, add an action. And now of course, this is going to be, if I just do a search API here, choose API call. I'm going to say the group and I'm going to say it's fake API. Of course, what I can do now is just, uh, I like to give this a little bit more 
of a name there, like API result. And of course, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the result come back. If I add this, add action, just go to state like that and update page state, set the fields. And I'm gonna say products list. And I'm gonna say select update type. And I'm now gonna set the value and the value that I'm gonna set, of course, will be the action output, which will be my API result there. Select that and I'm going to say as data type and that is all that I need to do hit confirm like that and now I know that my page date variable is now going to be filled with those products that list that comes back just hit close like that I just to demonstrate this I'm just going to add the plus here I'm just going to do a search for list view like that just choose list view just going to move that up just there like that select the list view there get it in the right place let's go to the children and I'm just going to say that this is a product like that choose the value and of course that's going to come from my page state I'm going to choose my products list like that hit confirm and hit save just say okay and then this hello world here I'm just going to move up here to the text selector choose product item and I'm just gonna say that this is a data structure field. And here I'm just going to say the product name like that and just hit, confirm. I'm just gonna put product name in here, like that, hit confirm. And then of course now I hope to see that my product names are gonna be there. So I'm just gonna quickly run this up here. Okay, so here I am in the browser, I'm just gonna hit this button here. And then you'll see that there I've got the two products that's been listed. You can kind of see that just here as my product item. So I've got my page state variable all populated there with those items. So hopefully, hopefully you found that useful. This is a very, very, very quick way of being able to kind of get those data types created within inside your application so that you can now use that throughout your Flutterflow application in a very, very convenient way. If you're enjoying this particular video, it'll be great to see you at the Digital Pros No Code Academy. Now, of course, it's a great, great private community alone, but of course, you've got all more articles there. You've got sort of more walkthrough videos. You've got all of my video content there as well. And of course, it's all ad free as well. So uh, please do check the link on the screen there, and it'll be great to see you there soon.